Hello, and welcome to Creepy Core and Folklore, the show about creatures, encounters, old tales, and myths. I'm your host, Iona Wayland, a dark fantasy author, mental health professional, and overall curious person. I want to join other spooky souls and hear about these unusual stories. Hi, spooky soul. I wanted to give a bonus episode um, because I've been in correspondence with this lovely listener uh, named Lily. Hi, Lily. I hope your commute is going well today. So she reached out to me um, because when she first started listening to Creepy Corn Folklore, um, when I talked about Arianrad, the um, one of the Celtic goddesses of like time and fate and she was on the um spider gods episode because she was a weaver um it was I I like really struggled with finding information about her and a lot of the Celtic gods and Lily really took the time to explain why and it's really sad so just you know it's really important but just make sure you're in the right headspace with listening to this So she writes, hi, I've just started listening to your podcast and I love it so much. I just finished the episode on spider mythology and I thought I could shed a little insight on why you couldn't find much information on the Celtic goddess. Up until around the 17th, 18th century, paganism was the main belief system in rural parts of the UK. But when England grew in power and invaded the other parts, they pretty much forced, quote, modern Christianity on everyone. I can't speak much for the experience in Ireland and Wales, but being a born and bred Scottish Highlander, I do know a bit more about our history in Scotland. Between 1750 and 1850-ish, the Highland clearances, and this is like, ugh, sorry. I just hate, I hate how they named it the clearances. This is really messed up. So the Highland clearances took place in several ways when armies, sorry, um, it's just, I just hear stories like this that have happened over and over again. And it's really sad and we need to make it not happen anymore. And I know this happened a long time ago, but it doesn't take away the hurt and the ripple effect of this. When armies invaded the Scottish Highlands and burnt many villages to the ground, taking much of the local history and folklore with them. Most Celt at this time weren't formally educated and generally did not read or write. So most stories were, so most stories were passed down through word of mouth only, much like the Afro-Caribbean tradition. Fun fact, this is also when many Scots stowed away on ships to America, and this is why many Americans have Highland ancestry. Anyone who remained was re-educated and indoctrinated into the Christian church. So after that, widespread paganism became almost obsolete, and anyone who worshipped nature slash goddesses instead of the church would be labeled as a heretic and punished as a Highlander. This loss of history is incredibly sad to think about, especially when Celtic folklore is so fascinating. It's nice that there is still some information out there, but sad to think how much has been lost and we'll never know. And then she says, sorry for the depressing history lesson. Please don't apologize, Lily. (laughs) Um, It's sad, um, but I, I think it's important to talk about. And I just, oh, I'm, I'm really glad you talked about it. And there's some updated information she sent as well. But she goes on to say, on a brighter note, the Hall- um, with Halloween coming up, I would love to hear you talk about Sawin. And don't worry, girl, I totally did. Um, it's one of the better documented pagan festivals. And so much of modern Halloween can be traced back to it. Trick or treating exists, known as guising in Scotland, pronounced like disguising, which is fun because I did talk about that. So that was cool. Because pagans used to leave sweet treats out for spirits to show them appreciation and deter them from turning malicious, and people would dress up in order to confuse the spirits. Lastly, in your story about Anansi, I'm assuming that he was able to trick the fairy using a human dummy, as fairies in folklore are generally known as malicious tricksters who love to trap humans by forcing them to speak and engage with them. Oh, so just as some 
background information. I was talking about, um, again, with the spider gods episode, the very first one, um, there's this part where a Nazi, um, used to trick a fairy like he was supposed to capture a fairy but he used a dummy um and the fairy was trying to get the dummy to talk um and instead of talking like because it was silent the fairy like hit the dummy but he had covered it in sap and so the fairy every time the fairy tried to like hit the dummy or like get it to speak or like pinch it or whatever it kept getting stuck more and more onto the dummy and so he was able to capture that fairy to give to the sun god by using the dummy and I I wasn't understanding I was like why why was this upsetting so she did a great job educating me about this so if you give away too much information about yourself yourself particularly na- your name then the fairy will be able to steal you away forever so this is why she would have been so angry at the dummy not talking back um and then she apologized for the huge info dump which it's like dude this is how I communicate <laughs> so I appreciate the info dump um And she was just saying, like, uh, how much she likes the episodes and the podcast and stuff. And I I just really appreciate Lily so much. Um, And then I asked her if it was okay if I read her (laughs) emails on here. And she said yes. Um, And then she said, I have to correct myself as I wrote that while whilst while I'm sorry whilst very tired I'm sorry I'm being very American right now (laughs) um and did not proofread paganism as a belief system actually died out long before the 1700s but many traditions were still practiced particularly in more rural parts of Scotland and the UK there's actually a village in Scotland named Peebles that's I love that name that still celebrates Beltane every year. Yes, Beltane. Yes, Beltane is lovely. Celtic history is fascinating, but unfortunately, I'm not much of a history buff and only have a very vague understanding. But as I deep dive into folklore, I always discover more history that I didn't know. And the Highland clearances are a such sad part of history that rarely gets spoken about. Lastly, if you want to see something hilariously creepy, go look up pictures of when people... <laughs> used to carve turnips instead of pumpkins at Halloween. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> they, they are terrifying. Oh my God. Um, here in Scotland, we were still using turnips up until the 90s because pumpkins weren't widely available. They are a nightmare to carve and look absolutely horrifying. <laughs> and this is what I mean when I'm like, I really love the community of people I've been able to connect with. Um, I, (laughs) where it's like, here's some real truth about this, like, you know, so that history doesn't repeat itself. Um, here's some, here's some folklore. And also here's a creepy thing to look at because it's upsetting. (laughs) End email. (laughs) Um, but we can correspond back and forth a bit more. And, um, she included, uh, this uh article that I could include I'm going to put in the show notes of uh this bonus episode um but uh they keep using the word how the landlords quote evicted the villages and not mentioning that it involved armies burning down the homes of people who wouldn't leave so just like keep that in mind when reading this article that it absolutely rosy colors it and rewrites the history um and then she says especially interesting to note at the beginning it mentions king james who led literal like witch hunts through the uk in the 1600s um wow okay so i i am very grateful for share for you sharing that with me lily i really appreciate that um And I love um, being able to talk with everyone all over the world. Like, it's been so great. Um, So thank you for sharing that, Lily. And I hope your commute goes well. And thank you for reaching out so, so much. And I hope that everyone has a great rest of the week. Thanks to all you spooky souls out there for listening to Creepy Core and Folklore. Follow on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok if you're looking for more uncanny content. If you have your own tales to tell, you can email creepycoreandfolklore at gmail.com. 
If you liked this, please leave a review wherever you get your podcasts or tell a friend who might enjoy these stories to spread the word. If you're interested in dark fantasy, check out my Hollowverse series. Ashes is available now in paperback and ebook on Amazon and audiobook on Audible, and the sequel is underway. I'm Iona Wayland, and I'll see you next time.